Sometimes we get sermon ideas from studying the Parsha. Sometimes we get them from the news or sports. And sometimes we get them from conversations with each one of you. This week, in talking to one of our members, a congregant shared with me their key to life. And this is what they said. Every day they wake up with the pledge to be 1% better, to grow each day just a little bit. We are reading now from the Torah's book, Bamidbar, located in the heart of the wilderness, the book that describes the wanderings of life as the Israelites march through the desert, reminding us of our task to find the path to a better life. One of the podcasts that I listen to each week on the Torah is Pardes from Jerusalem, and their title for this week's Parsha is, I Promise to Be My Best Self. This week's Parsha, Naso, means to lift up or to raise higher, teaching us that our trajectory of purpose in life, our goal and aim, is to be 1% better, to grow ourselves a little bit, a little bit every single day. Our Parsha tells the story of individuals and communities that aspire to growth and transformation little by little through both big and small steps in the words of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, to take a leap of action, not just a leap of faith. From the individual Nazarite pledge to grow one's personal holiness, to the tribal offerings in the Mishkat Desert Sanctuary focused on solidarity and unity in society, small leaps of action can inspire us to both lift ourselves and others. This is the season of graduations. Perhaps in your own family there's a graduate with their caps and gowns, tassels and diplomas. This week, you may have heard about Rahan Staten. He graduated from Harvard's law school. And like his fellow classmates at graduation, he was cheered on, applauded for his learning, for his achievements, and what lies ahead of him in his legal career. But Rahan barely graduated from high school. In fact, he had just above a 2.0 grade point average. He didn't go on to college after high school. He went into the workforce to help his father who raised him. He took a job in a sanitation company. He was a garbage man. It was his coworkers who pushed him to go back to school to get his college degree. And then when his father, a single parent who raised him, suffered a stroke, his father then went through physical rehab and he returned back to work his father inspired Rahan to continue his own pursuit of studies to get his law degree and apply to Harvard. And this is what Rahan said this week. Although I get credit for working hard, working hard was the easiest part of my life. I just happened to be around people who cared enough about me. I worked for a trash company where my coworkers told me that I should go to college instead. I had a boss who let me leave work to go to school and come back, and a cousin who helped me study for the LSATs. I couldn't have done it alone. He adds, once we see the value in the people around us, we can help people maximize their full potential. And I'll add, 1% at a time. At Harvard, Rahan founded an organization called the Reciprocity Effect which builds solidarity between Harvard Law students and the support staff, lifting up the service workers at Harvard, bringing, bridging the divide between students and staff, not simply by distributing gift cards and raising money for the staff, but also recognizing their work. Rahan created an annual graduation ceremony celebrating the staff's achievements. As he grew and transformed himself, Rahan also made sure to lift up others. Our Torah portion, Naso, begins with a census. Individuals are only counted in this portion when they lift up their heads, Nasu et Rosh. We are commanded to both lift ourselves and also to lift others up. How do we do that? Rahan not only lifted himself up, but only after others believed in him and lifted him up, then he returned the favor through that reciprocity effect. By the power of reciprocity, by lifting up others, that's how we lift up ourselves. 
Our portion contains the most ancient prayer in our tradition, Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessings. The prayer that we recite still today, every Friday night when we bless our children, and just before and in a few minutes, Kanner will lead us in the repetition of the Amidah with those words from the priestly blessing. When the temple stood in Jerusalem, it was recited twice a day, morning and afternoon. Those of priestly descent, the Kohanim, would assemble and bless the people with hands held high over their heads, singing the words of blessing and making that famous symbol, not just live long and prosper, which stands for a shin, for Shaddai, for God Almighty, filling us with gratitude and appreciation that helps us to elevate Naso, to aim higher, 1% each day in order to transform ourselves and with Rahan's reciprocity to lift up others. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory writes that a prayer is a ladder that we can climb like the angels. We are not the same after we receive God's blessings. We can be transformed, spiritually moved by that climb. We're different after that blessing because we are blessed. We have been brushed by the wings of eternity. As Leonard Nimoy said, live long and prosper. This ancient prayer is three lines, 60 letters, and it has the power to lift us up and inspire us. The opening line, Yavarechacha Adonai V'yishmarecha, may God bless you and watch over you, is a prayer about, the rabbis interpret anyway, material blessings. That God should bless us with financial security, with good health, and with protection. The second line, Ya'er Aronai Panave Lecha Vichuneka, may God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us, is a prayer for to live by the highest values, generosity, kindness, and graciousness. And the third and final line, Yisa Aronai Panave Lecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom, may God lift up God's face upon you and grant you peace. We pray that God cares about each and every one of us. Just as our portion, Naso, to lift up, reminds us of the need to lift ourselves up, to be counted, to raise our heads high. The only way we can do that is by taking Abraham Joshua Heschel's leap of action to help others, our neighbors, our communities, our co-workers. And the last blessing, of course, ends with peace. To teach us that blessing in themselves are no avail unless peace goes with them. So why are the blessings, I translated them in the plural, but if you're a Hebrew speaker, you might notice, these are all blessings that are singular, not plural, even though we bless an assemblage. Here we're blessing our congregation, and in temple times, they bless the entire Jewish people standing together. It could have been millions. So why is it referred to in the singular? Because the rabbis say, blessings only take hold when we work together, when we're united, when we understand that reciprocity effect, that we can only lift ourselves when we lift others. So this Shabbat, this week, this year, this day, may we aspire to live each day 1% better and live with the reciprocity effect by lifting ourselves up and lifting others together. Shabbat Shalom.